Hi folks, so I have another video uh, from the office, so apologies for the uh, echoey sound. It is a result of me filming in a room with very few soft furnishings rather than the fault of the uh, microphone itself. But uh, I'm going to be sharing a few thoughts on the Samsung J5, particularly because I've received a few pieces of feedback um, regarding uh, well, me talking about it on Trendy Talk, the podcast that I'm on. Um, and also, like uh, a few people have, have been uh, emailing me just asking about how my my uh, de-googling uh, journey is going regarding the smartphone. Um, but for those of you that don't know, I am on a regular podcast and it's going really, really well. It's uh, Trendy Talk. Uh, you can check it out on Hex's YouTube channel. Uh, it's also available on Peertube and in Gemini. So you can check that out. Um, th th when it comes to finding links about stuff that I do, the best place is just my website, chrisware.uk. Um, but yeah, so I've picked up a second-hand Samsung J5, and it turns out the battery life is actually really quite good. Uh, much better than the phone that I was using uh, previously. Uh, so yeah, my big hang-up of, of using a second-hand phone was that I didn't expect the, the battery life to be particularly good, or at least to be somewhat reduced. But it turns out that because this is a refurbished model, um, yeah, like the, the battery may very well have been replaced, or uh, ne you know, nevertheless, it's it's a really good. Uh, it's got a really good battery life, so. Yeah, I'm very happy with this phone. Um, and a number of people have asked why I haven't uh, decided to put a more freedom respecting operating system and why I've decided to go with the, the uh, version of Android that comes with Samsung phones. Um, and the truth is, is because um, I do not want to risk breaking this phone. This phone is incredibly useful when it comes to uh, work. Uh, as part of my job, I take photographs, I travel, um, I communicate with people through a whole different uh, set of, of mediums, uh, I browse the internet, uh, and all of these things are done on the go really quite well on a, uh, on a smartphone. And, and uh, I would be making life incredibly difficult for myself if I decided to go down the route which I have done in the past, which is just to use what they call a feature phone or a dumb phone. Um, and uh, to be honest, there are a lot of dumb phones that I've tried out that really aren't very good anyway. Um, when it comes to finding a phone that I'm happy with, I'm probably, at the end of the day, happier with a smartphone than I am with a feature phone because feature phones, in many ways, are just not that great. They're not as good as they used to be. You know, I look at a Nokia 3310, I think that's a great phone. I look at modern-day Nokia feature phones, and they're abysmal. They're a joke, and it's sad. And they're even... Um, like pretty cheap uh, smartphones with stock Android on that are fine. You know, they may not be very good when you match them up against a Samsung, but they're fine when you compare them to a feature phone. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I have installed, of course, the F-Droid App Store. I'm a big fan of the F-Droid App Store. It's a wonderful app store. Uh, I particularly like it because it's really well curated. I'm, of course, well aware that most of the apps on the F-Droid App Store are available on the Google Play Store, but it is nice just to have that curation. That's, that is really the primary reason. I, for example, use the Newsblur application to read RSS feeds. I could download that from, uh, I could download that from the uh, Google Play Store, I could download that from the F-Droid Store. I'd end up with basically the same experience, um, but yeah, the actual storefront of, of the, uh, the F-Droid Store is, is really quite good. I also like being able to micromanage the updates. Uh, it can get pretty uh, tedious if you have a lot of apps installed, but I try and minimize the number of apps I have installed. I do, however, use Google services on this phone. Um, there's a few reasons uh, for it, uh, but it comes down to the reason that most people use Google services. It's wonderfully convenient, uh, irritatingly so. Uh, being able to back up uh, photographs that I take and, and, and being able to, to put files up into to Google Drive is, is really useful. I use Google Drive uh, on desktop and on mobile and it is a really good service that's really cheap. It can't be beaten in that, in that regard. Uh, yes, I could very well use Dropbox. I have used Dropbox in the past. Dropbox has corrupted my files which I also uh, suspect Dropbox runs on you know pretty big tech infrastructure anyway if not Amazon, probably one of the others. And you could arguably say that Dropbox in and of itself is one of the big tech giants anyway, or, you know, at least the tier below it. So um, in, in, in reality, I didn't feel too much uh, of a problem in the way of going from Dropbox to, to Google. It, it 
is a better service, it's more reliable and it's cheaper. And, you know, Dropbox lost my business. Google didn't fundamentally gain it, uh, which is which is a bit sad in, in that regard. Um, but yes, and, um, and I think in regards, I don't use like too many Google services. Like I don't use anything like Gmail or anything like that. But, you know, the Google services that I feel are, are really quite good for the price that they are, uh, it's it's incredibly difficult to say no to. Uh, and I think that, you know, this sort of like uh, change is, is kind of a result of, of pessimism, if I'm completely honest. I kind of many, in many ways feel that the, the battle for privacy uh, has has been lost. And I feel kind of bad for saying that. And I wish I could offer some sort of uh, you know, more more of a positive outlook, and uh, maybe folks in the comments section uh, will be able to to do so. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's summed up by by looking at how my parents have approached the situation. My parents did not want to get smartphones, and in the past few months, have felt sufficiently cut out of society by not having a smartphone that they decided to bite the bullet and get them. They do not like them. They are dragging their heels every step of the way, but they have decided that they would fundamentally be cut out of parts of society if they didn't decide to adopt smartphone usage. And that is deeply, deeply depressing. That's really sad. But we collectively as a society have made the decision that we are fine with the way that big tech operates. That we are fine with the way that, you know, Android phones work. Because uh, we spoke on, I'm trying to talk about this YouGov poll where it said that, you know, like people are, uh, the indicator that people are very aware that their data is being used and why their data is being used. Um, and they use these smart services regardless. And um, it's not like people are uninformed here. I think we just as a society have, have decided to move in that direction. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, those of us dragging our heels are fundamentally, I don't know, powerless, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I think all things considered, um, it depends how much privacy you give up. Like it's not a zero, you know, it's not an all or nothing game. Um, but the second you pick up a mobile phone, there is some kind of tracking. Uh, someone mentioned in the comments of the latest Trendy Talk that there are laws surrounding, for example, mobile phone companies um, and how they use your data versus, for example, big tech corporations like Google and Facebook and how they use their data. Like Google and Facebook are much less regulated than, than telecoms. And that is a fair point. But the truth is, once your data is out of your hands, you kind of have to trust companies to obey the law. Uh, I have seen many uh, cases, and I'm sure you folks have as well, where companies have been prosecuted uh, for, uh, for for not obeying the law, or, or companies that consider fines to be the cost of, of doing business. And we have to fundamentally, uh, you know, imagine our data in the hands of, of the least trustworthy scenario. If the data is not in your physical control, uh, you, you have to, you know, you know, you have to operate on trust. And that's, that, you know, I do not necessarily inherently trust the law to protect me in that regard because companies will just as soon pay a fine and then carry on with business as usual. We've seen the European Union prosecute some of the big companies like Facebook and Google. Has it changed how they operate? Marginally, mildly. There have been some fringe successes, absolutely. But in the grand scheme of things, I think we're not winning. The free software movement, the uh, the, the, the privacy advocates, the, the software freedom advocates. I, I think we are, we have a few holdouts, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, it's an overwhelming battle. Take, for example, of course, Mastodon. I love Mastodon. I, my Mastodon is my primary social media of choice. Uh, it is free. It is open source. It's licensed under AGPL, if I can remember, if I remember correctly. And I would imagine the majority of Mastodon instances are on Amazon infrastructure. It does seem that, like, big tech hooks you in. And I don't blame people for using it. Amazon infrastructure is probably really, really quite cheap and reliable. Um, you know, I, I run my Gemini on DigitalOcean, but, um, you know, if everyone were to adopt Gemini tomorrow, there's a good chance that m most of Gemini would end up on, on Amazon infrastructure or DigitalOcean would, be become, it would become big enough that it would see itself become part of the big tech world, if, if not already. Um, 
I do think that free software in and of itself still serves an incredibly important and worthwhile purpose. Um, and I will always, always, always continue to, to advocate for it. In fact, of course, you know, just look at the free software games that I'm uh, putting up on, on, on the channel and, and, and taking a look at and playing. And yeah, I think that they offer something incredibly meaningful. But uh, I also think that these decisions about our privacy and our autonomy, they're, they're made by society as a whole. And um, whereas I can take symbolic stances by uh, putting a uh, uh, more freedom respecting operating system on my phone, at the end of the day, it's still not going to grant me absolute privacy because I'm deciding to engage with the internet. This is an internet device. Phones weren't made to protect your privacy. They were made to, you know, uh, be a window into what seems to be a corporate world for all intents and purposes. But they were, they were designed to communicate with people. They were designed for, you know, you to absorb media and for you to, in many cases, create it. Um, and, and, and also to, you know, and, and, and to talk with people and to communicate with people. It's, you know, it, it, uh, to, to make a phone, there always seems to be a compromise on, on privacy when it comes to, to communication one way or another. Um, and of course, any data that I send out, uh, yes, I could send it out using freedom and privacy respecting software. But again, uh, those viewing it, you know, you may be watching this video on YouTube, which again is not particularly freedom respecting or privacy respecting as well. So we, you know, there is no all or nothing here in the grand scheme of things. Um, it's, uh, we just got to make the best of it as, as we can. And I think that in many cases, when it comes to the case of privacy, uh, society has decided that it's okay with the way, you know, we operate. Because, you know, uh, surveys have, have have told us that people are very much aware of you know the fact that our data is, is being collected and, and used for targeted advertising uh so yeah uh, sorry to be a touch dour on that note uh, but it does come back to the fact that you know i do not earn that much money i cannot afford to brick my phone i rely on it for work and, and uh, as such i'm going to use the operating system i i see as being the most reliable and the one that the warranty on the phone protects. Um, yeah, I'm going to support uh, free and open source software always. I love it to pieces. It is an overwhelming passion of mine. But in, you know, when it comes to matching up against its overwhelmingly gargantuan comp competitors, it can't win in a pound for pound fight. I talk about this when I talk about free software gaming. If free soft, you know, if free and open source games try and, and, and take on like AAA titles pound for pound, if they try and take on that level of fidelity, if they try and take on the, the complexity of those games, they're going to lose. Free software and, 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 and open source games, they can offer something that the AAA titles can't, but for those people that are attracted to AAA titles because they're AAA titles, because of the fidelity they offer, because of what AAA can bring to the table, you know, you're not going to win those people over. Uh, it's a matter of, of playing to your strengths and, and uh, open source games, they have a great deal of strength. Um, it's, it's like the, the ultimate conclusion to, to what the modding community uh, is and, and could be as well, especially when you look at games like uh, Battle for Wesnoth or Mind Test. Wonderful games where, um, where, where a community has, has come together and, and, and built something that, you know, whilst you, know, you match it up with its, its you know, with, with, with AAA games might look somewhat um, uh, lesser in, in, in one regard or another. Um, they actually, you know, to many people offer a lot more. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd do a little bit of an update on, on, on that. But um, yeah, uh, regarding uh, the Samsung G5, I'm actually broadly very happy with it. I've got no real complaints. Um, I'm not a fan of the Samsung ecosystem. I've not like got a Samsung account or logged into any of that kind of stuff. Uh, that's just, uh, you know, I'm going to leave them with that because I don't, you know, want it. Samsung offers nothing to me. Google does, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, when it comes to to um, uh, when it when it comes to a few of the Google services, you know, I've tried Dropbox. Dropbox corrupted my files. What can I say? You know, and I yeah, like I say, Dropbox. Uh, is, is likely going to be using some, some big tech infrastructure to support it anyway. So. Uh, anyway, that's a bit of a ramble. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts 
on the uh, down in the comment section below. But yeah, like fundamentally speaking, I'm not I'm not uh, switching up my operating system for the same reason that I don't host my my own email. Um, is because, like, quite frankly, I don't necessarily trust my own competence to do the job reliably enough that I need for uh, for use as a tool in my my daily life. And um, you know, that's the. Uh, that's the strength of it, I'm afraid, folks. But uh, thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure as always. And uh, yeah, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.